Here is the entire 11 year update history of Clash of Clans from 2012 to 2023. Why? Because nostalgia. <laughs> June 21st, 2012, Clash Clans, formerly known as Project Magic, will be soft launched in Canada, available for iPhone and iPad only. About a month later, on August 2nd, they would globally release it, however, still only available on those platforms. At the time, the Max Tell Hall was only 8, the graphics were pretty good for its time, and the game would almost immediately become a hit. The 4th of August, the first known update, we got achievements and a new trap, the Giant Bomb. A few weeks later, on the 30th of August, we got some cool new stuff, the Tesla, new decoration flags, and graphical improvements. September 18th, spells were finally added to the game, but at the time, it was only three, the Lightning, Heal, and Rage, and they were brewed with gold. Along with spells, defense replays were added so you can now see what happened to your base. A new building, the Wizard Tower, and the time to build walls was finally removed. Yeah. Once upon a time, walls took time to build. October 15, the kick message and clan trophy requirement were added to clans. And about two weeks later, on October 27th, the first seasonal update dropped for Halloween. However, it wasn't just a seasonal update, we got Town Hall 9, now the highest Town Hall in the game. That brought along some new stuff like the Expo and Jump Spell. This was also the update in which Super Soul removed the ability to sell buildings. It was nice having that feature, but it didn't last long, plus it wasn't exactly useful if you wanted to progress anyways. November 19, the first winter season, the village was covered in snow for the first time, which looked pretty dope. We got the first Christmas obstacle the Santa spell, and the ability to boost buildings such as the spell factory and collectors was finally possible. So now we're at 2013, and the first update on January 10th was a very important one because we got heroes, which at the time was a big deal. But it was just the king and queen, and they had no abilities. But of course, in order to get heroes, they also introduced the Dark Elixir storage, and the drills. The 5th of February, we got two new traps, the Air Bomb and the Seeking Air Mine. And on March 12th, Dark Elixir troops were introduced, the Minion, Hog Rider, Valkyrie, and of course, the Barracks to train those troops. About a month later, on April 17th, Leagues were added, so now players weren't in one massive pool. Additionally, the Golem was also added in this update, my personal favorite troop. Moving on to May 23rd, Town Hall 10 was introduced, which brought along the new Inferno Tower, and you could now watch replays of your own attacks in the new attack log. And the 17th of June, a new spell was added called the Freeze. July 28th, we got a new Dark Laser troop, the Witch. You can now share replays to the clan chat and the ability to mute players in global chat. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention global chat was a thing. <laughs> August 27th, the player profile got a rework, allowing you to see much more information about a player. And this was super useful for those who ran clans. September 30th was a very important part of history of class because village edit mode was added, meaning now you didn't have to move everything but the kitchen sink around the damn base, so making bases was now easier and fun. It's also how I got my foot in the door here on YouTube, if anyone cares, <laughs> doing speed builds and stuff like that. It was a fun time. October 7th, the game was finally available on Android devices, allowing its fan base to grow exponentially. November 6th, you could now upgrade traps. Previously, traps were just traps, no level 1, 2, or any of that. A button was also added to rearm all of them at the same time, instead of having to go back to the shop and purchase them every time they went off. Yes. That was a thing. <laughs> and lastly, spells were updated to cost elixir instead of gold. December 5th, the last update of 2013 bought back the winter theme and a new multi-target ability for the Inferno Tower. Overall, 2013 was a pretty decent year with lots of cool and game-changing additions. On January 29th, 2014, heroes were given abilities. Prior to this update, heroes would only do one thing hit stuff, but this update made them much more hero-like by giving the king his iron fist and the queen her royal cloak. Co-leaders were now a thing, so now we had members, elders, co-leaders, and the leader. And on April 9th, a massive update would arrive, Clan Wars. Finally, the name Clash of Clans made sense. Now the clans did clash. 
May 16th, they added the ability to save war bases and also edit them, along with other clan war improvements and fixes. On July 3rd, you can now spectate clan war battles live, no more waiting around to see if your clan may butcher his attack or not. <laughs> the 16th of September, the Lava Hound will be introduced to the game. You could now use Elixir to upgrade walls. And in October 22nd, we got a new trap called the Skeleton Trap. On the 11th of December, you could now save and edit multiple bases, finally. And you could now watch a live replay of your base being attacked in the moment. I remember this update vividly. You would not believe how cool this was. Like, wow. Technology! Before, you had to just sit there and wait for your base to get wrecked before you could actually see anything. But anyways, 2015 came along and in February 24th, clans now had levels. This made clans able to level up and earn perks that all clan members can benefit from. On April 30th, a new defense was added, the Air Sweeper, and for the first time in Clash history, a one-time use name change which was also free. July 1st, the Dark Spell Factory was added, introducing the Poison Spell, Earthquake, and Haste Spell, and finally, more leagues were added, Titan and Legend League. Moving on to September 9th, the main part of this update was a War Tiebreaker. The War Tiebreaker was pretty much a way to calculate who really won the war when it was a tie. Before this, it was incredibly easy to tie a war, which wasn't always good. But on December 10th, we got a new update that brought Clash of Clans into a new era, Town Hall 11. With Town Hall 11, we got a new hero, the Grand Warden, a new defense eagle artillery. This was also the update that made shields a big part of the game. Instead of leaving your Town Hall outside for a free cheap shield, after this update, guarding your Town Hall was critical to progressing in the game. 2016 was finally here and the loot cart was added along with the treasury and the clan castle and star bonuses. March 21st, we got a new troop, the bowler, and on May 24th, friendly challenges were now possible, along with two new troops, the miner, baby dragon, and two new spells, the clone and skeleton spell. Moving on to October 12th, we got friendly wars and a new defense from Clash Royale, added over to Clash of Clans, the Bomb Tower. And finally, at the end of 2016, the 19th of December, we got the first temporary troop, along with a temporary trap and spell. The Ice Wizard from Clash Royale, the Freeze Trap, and the Santa Surprise. Heading on over to 2017, May 22nd, we got the biggest update in a while. The Builder's Base was introduced with new defenses, new troops, battle mechanics, and really new everything. It was a new village. For the main village, you can now do something called Gearing Up, available for the Mortar, Cannon, and Archer Tower. June 27th, Builder Hall 6 was introduced, bringing a new troop, the Night Witch, and a new defense, the Roaster. On December 27th, Builder Hall 7 came along with a new giant cannon and dropship, and on the 11th of October, friendly battles for the Builder Base, was now finally possible. Flying all the way over to December 18th, the last update of 2017, we got a new feature called Clan Games. Basically a new feature that would allow players in a clan to earn rewards for completing various challenges. And tagged along with that was Magic Items. So now we're at 2018 and on the 5th of March, the new Builder Hall 8 was added, introducing the new Mega Tesla. Over on the home village, a new feature popped up, the Trader. About a month later, on April 9th, a number of Clan War tools was added. And on the 11th of June, the biggest update in a while, Town Hall 12. With Town Hall 12, we got Siege Machines and the Siege Workshop. Included with that was the Wall Wrecker and the Battle Blimp. A new troop, the Electro Dragon, and you could now change your name multiple times as long as you had the gems for it. After some balance changes and Supercell's yearly summer vacation, they returned on October 23rd with another massive update, Clan War Leagues. Definitely worth the wait. Clan War Leagues was a new competitive Clan War tournament-like system that clans could participate in once a month. With the new feature came a new currency called League Medals earned from those wars, more magic items that could be purchased with those medals, a new tornado trap, and 25 new goblin maps. The 10th of December was the last update of 2018, bringing with it the new Ice Golem, Bat Spell, the Stone Hammer Siege Machine, and more magic items. After some small patches and balancing, we're now at 2019. 
Finally, on April 2nd, we got Season Challenges, aka the Season Pass, along with the first ever Hero Skin. On the 18th of June 2019, we got Boulder Hall 9, which introduced the new Lava Launcher Defense and a new troop, the Hog Glider. And over on the main village, a new Research Potion, Practice Mode, it was now possible to share bases, and Legends League got a complete overhaul. On the 16th of October 2019, we got a new clan recruitment feature where you can search for new members to join your clan based on specific stats. Along with that was a new look to profiles, clan profile, and some other quality of life changes like Quick Train. And finally, the 9th of December, yet another Tal Hall, Tal Hall 13. With it, a new hero, the Royal Champion, the Scatter Shots, the Siege Barracks, the Yeti, and tons of other small additions and tweaks. Alright, 2020. The 30th of March, we got something new called Super Troops, an upgraded version of existing troops that you can temporarily buff at the Super Sauna. This was also the update where you could now ask for specific troops. I don't know, I thought that was worth a mention. <laughs> June 22nd, we got a new Dark Elixir troop, the Head Hunter, available at Town Hall 12, as well as the usual changes in every update. But my favorite part, sceneries. A way to change the landscape of the entire village, which was pretty sweet. This was also the update where if you were inactive for more than 90 days, your village will continue to work on things while you were away. A pretty nifty feature. Okay, so now we're at December 7th. In this update, we got the new Log Launcher Siege Machine, a new invisibility spell, two new super troops, and a new magic item called the Super Potion. Now, currently at 2021, on the 12th of April, it was time for another Town Hall level. Seems like time's flying. Town Hall 14. Aside from your usual new Town Hall content and quality of life improvements, builders were now upgradable, able to attack troops and repair buildings, and a new pet house army building that housed four pets that could accompany your heroes in battle. The 15th of June, two new troops, the Dragon Rider and the Rocket Balloon Super Troop. You can now share armies and rotate bases. And a little later, on the 27th of September, we got another Super Troop, the Super Bowler. The last update of 2021 followed a similar pattern with the new Super Dragon and Flame Flinger Siege Machine. Alright, so now we're at 2022. Even though this wasn't a big update, I thought it was worth mentioning that on the 16th of February, the hero's extra life was added. So now if you attacked once and your heroes died, you wouldn't come back to your heroes dead. They would have an extra life. And then the 2nd of May, probably the largest update in Clash of Clans history, the clan capital, which is a central hub where the entire clan contributes to the construction and upgrading of a massive base. This is similar to the builder base update in which attacking and defending was entirely different from the home village. If you're curious to learn more about it and every feature included, as a reminder, the entire patch notes will be linked down below, and that goes for every update I've talked about. Since, you know, I am skipping some less significant features that you might be interested in. Anyways, with the clan capital, we got a new forge building to produce more capital gold, a new currency used to upgrade buildings in the capital districts, the trader got a rework, now with two taps for gems and raid medals, yet another new currency earned from capital raids. And finally, the clan profile got some UI changes. Heading on over to June 27th, troops were now free to train, completely free. But national flags were removed from the game. On October 10th, we would get the second biggest update of 2022. Town Hall 15. Introduced with the new Town Hall level was two new buildings, the Spell Tower and the Monolith, a new troop, the Electro Titan, the Battle Drill Siege Machine, and a new spell called the Recall Spell. Four more pets were also added, Frosty, Diggy, the Poison Lizard, and the Phoenix. And finally, all barracks duplicates were removed from the game. So now you only had one barracks of each kind. All right, and now we're at the last update of this year. On December 12th, we got a new super troop, the Super Miner, a temporary troop for the holidays, the Ram Rider from Clash Royale. The Santa Surprise spell made a return this year, 15 new goblin maps, a shovel of obstacle rework, and a host of cool additions. Over on the clan capital side of things, the first new district was added called Skeleton Park, which also introduced the Inferno Dragon and Graveyard spell. And you could now customize your clan house with different parts, a small but 
cute little feature. <laughs> and finally, we're at 2023. Not much happened in nearly the first half of the year, but that's because they were working on a new massive update. The long-awaited Builder Base 2.0 rework. Essentially, they threw away the old method of attacks and defenses and introduced a new multi-stage system that was far more strategic and arguably fun. And because of this multi-stage system, your base was now split into two, and in the future it may be even three or four. First off was Boulder Hall 10 adding a new defense, the X-Bow, and a new troop, the Electrofire Wizard. The auto-related tasks were changed to Bob, and Otto was given his own outposts, new buildings necessary for the second village, and a new hero machine, the Battle Copter. And at last, we're at the most recent major update, the June 12th Summer Update. A new troop was introduced, the Apprentice Warden. A new super troop, the Super Hog Rider. Two new magic items, the Pet Potion and the Builder Star Jar. And a mountain of new levels for Town Hall 15. Other than that, I loved the new Hero Skin Selection UI. Very clean. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye. Nah, I'm kidding, but uh, yeah, that's a wrap. That's every major content update since the game's inception. I gotta say, these videos never get boring to make. It has always been a fun, nostalgic trip for me, and I assume for those watching as well. With that being said, let me know what was your favorite update or year in Clash of Clans. Now that you've probably binged the entire history of Clash of Clans, some of those old fond memories will return. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gimme out. Peace!